Thank you. Thanks, Brendan, and thanks all. Uh, I think it's a pretty neat segue between the very stimulating discussion at lunch from Gary uh, in terms of the role and the potential and the um, roadmap on the role for uh, the private sector in the provision of services and public infrastructure. And as a thought stimulator in terms of uh, some of the discussion that we'll have with the panel afterwards, uh, we commissioned some research uh, which was conducted last week, some quantitative research, just to get a measure of where the community sat on this issue. I know in the past there have been uh, lots of uh, various surveys and studies, etc., done, but it's always good to benchmark and track and monitor where community sentiment is. And I think uh, it's appropriate that we probably present some of that today. So that's what I'm going to do as a, as a thought promoter for our discussion. So essentially, I'm just going to go through uh, the survey. Uh, we've have, we have an overall finding, and then we have a sector-by-sector -sector response, which uh, drills down to get some distinction between the um, support or otherwise for economic uh, uh, PPPs and the social PPPs. Then I'll, um, because, I, because I've got the lectern, I'll give you some of my insights and observations on that and what it might mean. Because uh, uh, we as a business, and myself, I've been in this game for some time, and Craig Gavin Anderson does a lot of uh, infrastructure work, has for many years, and we have a research company, so we've always been focused on understanding where the community sits on various projects and various issues. So with that insight, I've um, given myself the, the, um, the grace to uh, make some insights and observations which might help as part of the, the panel discussion. So I'll just flick through some of these initial, these are our advertisement slides for our businesses and talk to you about the poll. This was conducted just last week. It was a, a news poll survey. It was a, it's not an in-depth survey. I hasten to add it's just a couple of questions, it's just so we could get some kind of measure uh, and sentiment about support or otherwise for PPPs. Uh, we did a survey that, of 1,200 people, which means that we can actually break down statistics across states and across age, group, age, age groups and demographics like that, which gives us a, another measure, an interesting measure to sense if there are any particular distinctions across the community. So this is the overall support. And it's, I've got a pie graph there, but in essence, uh, you'll see that on the pie graph that to the general question about support for the role of private sector in the provision of infrastructure, very generic question, we have 14% uh, of the community strongly in favour. 34% somewhat, 28% uh, strongly against, and 17% somewhat against. And a pretty low figure of don't know. For such a complex issue, I, I think that's quite a low figure and I'm a bit surprised by it. I suspect the default might be to, to being negative if they don't really understand the question. Then we asked a question about breaking it down across the various sectors. Um, public transport, motorways, public hospitals, prisons, and public schools. And again, there is, there we started to note some differences here, and some of them might not be surprising, some might be. But in, in essence, the greatest support was for the economic infrastructure because I sense that they had, they recognised that more. It was a sense that they understood that that's what, where the private sector might have a role because they actually see in many instances that they're, they're paying out of their hip pocket for it. So they get an understanding of it. And they've seen it work, and, and in terms of, of talking about outputs, as Gary was talking about today. This is a service that they see that they get some value from. So public transport and motorways, the, the support's higher and you're getting over the 50% margin. So pretty good, pretty interesting statistics. Prisons are in a kind of league of their own because I'm not sure that the public necessarily has a great concern for the welfare of prison comfort. Uh, I know it's obviously important for this sector, um, but the support level did did drop, it's an element of social, um, of, of social PPPs, but the level did drop. But alarmingly, there's quite significant opposition, and probably not unexpected, to public schools and to the role of uh, outsourcing in public schools and, and, and in hospitals. Where you see, if you, if you add up the somewhat against and totally against, you get a figure of 59 for schools and 52 for hospitals. So what does it say? What does this snapshot tell us? It tells us, and 
we benchmarked this research on some uh, research was conducted by the precursor to, to uh, the uh, IPA, OzSID, which was done about eight years ago, and it was kind of a generic survey. And by and large, sentiment hadn't shifted at all, which when you consider that there's been sort of eight to ten years in that time frame, that the fact that the community is equally and evenly divided and split on this matter is an interesting finding in itself. And it, and it can be read in a positive sense and a negative sense. It says to me that the public's still very confused about what PPPs involve. It's a very complex uh, issue to try and explain and to get people to understand. In New South Wales, the, the, the highest level of, of support was in Queensland, but again, uh, statistically not a great difference across the states. In New South Wales, I was interested in the finding that it was kind of on a par with where it had been previously and with, in line with the other states, considering that we probably had the most high profile uh, coverage and concern about a PPP with the, the Cross City Tunnel um, in its former life and, uh, and some ongoing discussion about the Lane Cove Tunnel. Notwithstanding those, the, the extraordinary amount of publicity that those projects generated, their, their level of support really remained relatively unchanged. Uh, the fact that governments are now focused on, and we have stimulus packages everywhere, promoting the use of and, and input into, into infrastructure, the fact that there's been that increased focus has not changed sentiment as well. I think that was an interesting takeout for the support of the private sector being involved. And of course, as I've pointed out, less support and, and in some cases resistance to the role of the private sector and to what people see as the, as the sacred cows of, of private of, of public schools and public hospitals. The biggest demographic split, and I think this is um, uh, a topic and a theme that might, be, that might um, uh, emerge in our discussion, is about the greatest difference was in age demographic. There was a much greater sense of support from the younger, younger community as to the older community. And that is where I think that there's a potential advantage in terms of of the strategy going forward. Sentiment is always based on what they've experienced. And this is again where if the service delivery is okay, it's a good outcome. But overall, um, and that's why I've, I've included this, this uh, graph, it's actually not related to the surveys, just to give you an idea that pretty well on most issues that you, that you measure, you'll have your hard rump of opposition and your rump of support. But in the middle, this gr great mass of people that really it's, not, it's a low level issue, they don't really they, they're not really concerned or care. So the entrenched opposition at one end of the scale, 28%.